we were at a party and Clive said to me, um, I'm, um, I'm, I'm going to set about trying to put together a low budget independent British horror film. And I think there's a part in there for you. I said, okay. A year later, we were at Cricklewood turning the cameras on Hellraiser. Um, uh, no longer, technically speaking, a British movie. Uh, Clive did have a deal uh, in place with Virgin, which, which would have made it British funded. Um, the Virgin pulled out of it, I, I think because their remit was basically family entertainment, and I think they, they didn't quite see Hellraiser sitting neatly with that. <laughs> Though given the number of kids that I have coming to my table now, I think maybe, maybe it was family entertainment anyway. But, um, that's a whole other discussion. Um, so Clive and Christopher Fig is producer, put themselves on the plane, went out to Los Angeles and started pitching the movie and their very first meeting was, was with New World, Roger Coleman's old outfit, and they took it there and then. Um, so, although I would say 95% uh, of the talent that put the movie on the screen was British, 100% of the money that put the movie on the screen was, was American. So I, I always, I always have a an asterisk when I read that Hellraiser is the greatest British horror movie ever made, because you know, 100% of the money going in means that 100% of the money coming out um, was called dollars, not pounds, and that matters. So, had you read The Hellbound Heart before? Clive asked you to read for it? I'm sure I had, because I'd read it in, in manuscript, mm -hmm. uh, and I, I had to go back and check this, because I wasn't sure myself. I've just written a foreword for the Scarlet Gospels, um, Clive's new novel. They're bringing out a special edition of it later in the year. Yeah, all of you have already paid to buy the Scarlet Gospels. Yeah, they're going to bring out a widescreen deluxe director's cut edition of a novel now um, with bells and whistles, I don't know what exactly. So I went to check this and uh, um, actually The Hellbound Heart was published pretty, pretty much exactly as we were shooting Hellraiser in, in, in late 1986. So yeah, I would have read it already. I heard um, that you originally wanted a different role in that. No. Ah, uh, that's just a nasty... Nasty woman. <laughs> I told this story slight, slightly with my tongue in my cheek once in a letter. <laughs> it became and, a thing. And it, it has stuck like you know what to you know. It, it, it is, it's stuck like a fly to fly paper. Um, I always knew I was going to play Pinhead. When Chris Fig called me to kind of finalize things, he said, look, by the way, there is this one other part still open, and that was uh, playing the, one of the guys who deliver the mattress to the house um, when Larry snags his finger on the banister and bleeds on the floor, which kickstarts the process of bringing Frank back to life. What I said in the interview, and this is actually true, um, there was a moment where I thought, this was my first movie. And I had a purely actively thought in my head, was, which was, if I'm gonna be in a movie, maybe, I, maybe it's good for people to be able to see me. So if I'm going to auditions and people say, oh, what have we seen you in recently? Uh, I can say, well, I was in Hellraiser and I was in that scene. I was like, oh yeah, you, you were that guy. And there was a, a thought in my head of, you know, I'm going to be in this movie playing this, this guy with no name, covered in latex and nails. How is that going to happen as an actor? Um, um, but I, but I, I, that was all I said, and this keeps coming back to me over and over again that I desperately wanted to play the, the mattress. <laughs> I'm not sure I would be sitting here today if I had made that choice. Well, you might have... Talk Play the shit talk out of that through mattress your delivery motivation for delivering the mattress. Well, you know, I, 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 I You might have done it so well <laughs> that you would have been here anyway. 